You smell that? <laughs> That's fish. <laughs> Janet. Good morning, George. Ready to go try some smallmouth fishing? I'm ready to go beat you, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so run out here in the lake about 10 miles or so. Man, look at that clear water. <laughs> the plan is to go catch some smallmouth. Got the perfect weather right now. I don't want to jinx us, but it just looks really good. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a great day. It's very interesting to get to come up and uh, fish Lake Mille Lacs. The smallmouth grow so much larger here than they do in other parts of the country. So it's going to be a great day. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I think Hang that, on. that was cheating. The motor's not even turned off yet. I can't help it that you're slow. <laughs> that's, not, that's not my problem. Early June is a great time to fish Mille Lacs. It's a famous lake in north central Minnesota. It's better than, than most places in the Great Lakes. But we targeted it in early June because the bite is so wide ranging. You've got the opportunity to target spawning fish, pre-spawning fish, post-spawning fish. What we're gonna try is a, a drop shot rig. And I'm using kind of the traditional with a small number four finesse hook and a 3 16 round drop shot weight, about a foot of line to keep it up off the bottom and uh, get away from the zebra mussels. Uh, that's a really big problem in a lot of the northern lakes, the Great Lakes, and, and anything close to the Mississippi River, it seems like. Got a bite. <laughs> Feels like a good one, too. Nice. Can't complain about the wind anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You like that pumpkin tube? Ah, here we go. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. That's a pretty good start of the day right there. Good beginner. That's a good beginner. Yeah, hopefully they get a little bigger than that, but I love that. Nothing fights like a smallmouth. They are the meanest freshwater fish I've ever tangled with. Right out there. Didn't even feel him bite. It was just heavy all of a sudden. Really? Yeah. No, no one, no fish. Rock. There's one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Boy, they are so pretty in this clear water. Ah. <laughs> That's a little better. That's a nice fish, good three and a half pound fish. Good deal. Smell that? <laughs> That's fish. One of the things I've, I've found with smallmouth is when it's bright out, they go shallow. When it's cloudy and even windy, they go deep, totally opposite of what a largemouth does. Oh, okay, Janet's got one. Mine broke off. <laughs> there you go. That's a beauty. Not bad for starters. My <laughs> starter. <laughs> oh. I think we've got into a a little wad of babies. Two and a half pounders. Baby might be strong, but not exactly the ones we're looking for. 
<laughs> a good deal. Not too bad. No, that's a good one. <laughs> Man, it makes a pretty picture. Oh, there's one. Well, he's got he's got buddies. You'll get two or three of them that actually follow the fish up to the boat. He's not that big, but he was really mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame him. Okay, I'm really liking that location. You're right on the very sharp drop off this flat. Very slight variation. Uh, a foot will be the difference in holding that fish or not holding fish. Got him. An oh, acrobatic yeah. one. I'm loving it. Ah. <laughs> Never gets old. They are loving that drop shot today. Now that George and Janet have found the smallmouth, their next challenge is finding the big ones. Stay tuned for more action. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear. By Triley, Angler's Trust Berkeley Triley, Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. And by Abu Garcia for life. Hey, what's going on there? Oh! <laughs> George Little and Janet Parker are testing the early June smallmouth bite on Lake Mille Lacs. The numbers are here, but now they're after bigger fish. Seeing here is the, a lot of fish up off the bottom from four to you know 70 feet, and I mean a lot. So what's happened is the sunshine has got these fish to go a little shallower, and they're even up off the bottom and there's a lot of bugs, there's a lot of minnow activity, fish are breaking. So our original plan was to throw the drop shot and we're catching them on that. We're gonna switch, switch up here and throw something that's higher in the water column and see if we can't get these fish to bite too. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Very good, that's, look at the head on that fish. Very pretty. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> it's a Texas size. <laughs> I think this morning it turned out to be just a little bit too calm. But then as the wind came up, you didn't have to worry about your presentation quite so much. The fish were more aggressively feeding. Side of the mouth. <laughs> there you go. That's the size of the orange? Yeah. There he is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The key to finding the fish was to find the clean spots on the rock reefs. And what I mean by that is no weeds. The fish aren't in the weeds. The water's not warm enough yet, so they were in the clean spots. That was an absolute key to what we were doing. Got one on the marabou jig. Just another really nice solid fish. Gorgeous. Oh, there we go. I got one. Oh yes, feels oh, heavy. That one too. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. All right. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I think yours. I don't know. Maybe mine's. <laughs> no, I win this one. No, I think mine's. No, bigger. no, no, no. Yeah, I win well, this one. Look at it. <laughs> I let am looking at here, it. Let me feel. <laughs> okay, let's get him back in. Your mine's bigger. Let's get him back in. Like as I said. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there they go. Today's tackle was really simple. We had a six and a half foot medium action rod with a lot of tip. We matched that up with a Revo reel, 15 pound spider wire, and then 10 pound 100% fluorocarbon as the leader. A four-aught finesse hook, 
3 16 weight and a power tube. Green pumpkin power tube was all you needed. We caught a ton of fish today. Anybody can do this with this rig. <laughs> Once the wind picked up, we got a little bit of cloud cover. The fish really started biting, and it turned out to be much better. Nice fish. We are having fun. Go in through the gills, being careful not to damage the gills. Grab a hold of the hook, rotate it out, pull it, and the fish Voila. doesn't know what happened. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Ah. <laughs> oh, I got one. Ooh. Okay, good job, Janet. <laughs> that was pretty good timing. Oh. Well, let's hang on to this one for a second. And okay, now we have had a great day of smallmouth yes. fishing. <laughs> Good job, Janet. Well, that's just not fair. Mine's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you're a fan of hard fighting fish, the smallmouth bass is your friend. Actually, a member of the sunfish family. The smallmouth is native to the lakes of North America. Hi, I'm Laura Shera, and welcome to NAF Clubhouse. Smallmouth bass are famous for being found in clear water. In fact, if you have access to an underwater camera, some of the coolest footage you can capture is a smallmouth messing around with your bait. The fact that they do like clear water can make them a challenge. That's why using fluorocarbon line is the best tactic. That's what George and Janet are using to make their lines nearly invisible to the fish. As you can see, it's working to bring these terrific fighters to the boat. The North American Fishing Club is designed by anglers for anglers. If you fish, this is the place to be. North American Fisherman is offering you a chance to fish with our guys. Wow, what a fish. Hey, I'm Eric Cotty with North American Fisherman. If you want to come up here and fish with me, you can sign up at North American Fisherman's Facebook page, or you can go to fishingclub.com to sign up for a contest to fish with myself or Tyler Capella. Hey, it's up to you. All you have to do is enter. Go to fishingclub.com or like us on Facebook for your chance to win. Coming up, what's lurking beneath the surface that threatens to destroy the water you fish? Find out on Silent Invaders, up next. In the depths of the Great Lakes is a scene reminiscent of a nightmare. Slimy, snake-like creatures with suction cup mouths lined with rings of sharp teeth and a rasping tongue prey on the trout, salmon, and whitefish that live in these lakes. Sea lampreys are the vampires of the deep. Here's a good lamprey mark on this whitefish. The effects of one of the most notorious of the Great Lakes invaders dates back to the 1950s, when the lamprey virtually wiped out the commercial and recreational fisheries in the Great Lakes. A fish is seldom able to free itself from a mouth like this. Since four out of the five Great Lakes straddle the U.S. and Canadian border, both governments are fighting these silent invaders with every weapon they've got. Our battle is, is constant and we can't let up. One of the most important weapons in this battle is lampricide, a chemical deadly to the lamprey, but non-toxic to humans, other mammals, and fish. They attack while the lamprey is still in its vulnerable larva stage. Without question, this is, this is the most important program uh, to the Great Lakes. Without this program, we could not make progress towards lake trout restoration. Lampricide is highly effective in small streams like this, but the mother load of spawning lamprey come from the St. Mary's River. Here, a yellow granular chemical called baleucide is planted in the riverbed below. It causes the lamprey larva to emerge from the mud, ingest a super concentration of the toxic chemical, and die. Anytime we can reduce the number of lampreys, it's going to help uh, all species of fish. But even before the spawning season begins, thousands of captured adult lamprey await their fate. This is where the males will be sterilized. One by one, tail first, the lamprey is sucked into the heart of a robotic machine. A biologically active chemosterilant called bizazir is injected into its belly. 
If there's a hundred sterilized males in the river and a hundred normal males in the river, females in the river have a 50-50 chance of mating with a sterilized animal. And so, in effect, we will reduce reproduction in the river by 50%. The sea lamprey has lived in the ocean for nearly 300 million years. It entered the Great Lakes through man-made shipping canals. Anglers and commercial fishermen have been severely affected by its invasion. This $7 billion a year industry is protected by the efforts of governmental bodies to the tune of $20 million a year. Canada spends $8 million a year fighting this pest. It's your concern and tax dollars that keep our Great Lakes protected. So stay informed and stay involved in this daily battle with the silent invaders. This is North American Fisherman's Field Test, powered by Stuff Stuff. Everything you see here has been tested and improved by members of the North American Fishing Club. If you're looking for the latest in gear, this is the information you can trust. First up, no, this is not my fancy new accessory. It's the Handy Twine Ring Knife. This ring knife is perfect for fishermen who frequently cut braided and high strength line. Club member Ian Gomez says the ring knife is perfect for cutting fishing lines, small ropes, and other chores around the house. Up next, the Pit Boss is the ideal flipping bait. Its unique body allows for greater hookups and drives bass crazy. Club member Shannon Weber says this is his new go-to flipping bait for bass because they're practically jumping into the boat. To learn more about these products or to have your gear field tested, join me at fishingclub.com. Field test, powered by Stuff Stuff. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Berkeley Gulf, alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. By Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Coming up, John Haynes has our latest Not Wars light competition, and we head back to Mille Lacs to finish up the day with George and Janet. This is North American Fisherman. Here we are, week three of Not Wars Light. Why light? Because we're only using light line from Berkeley. Six pound Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, eight pound Trilene XT, and six pound fire line. Pitting the best fishing knots head to head in a competition of strength. This week's challenger, the Fishing Fool, which was the champion from the 2009 Knot War. And it's going up against our winner from the last two weeks, the World's Fair Knot. Now, if you missed how to tie that knot, we're gonna show you how to do it right now. Start by running the tag end through the eye of the hook and run up the main line before doubling back to form a loop. Bring the loop back over the double line and grasp the double line through the loop. Run the tag end through the new loop formed by the double line. Then bring the tag end back through the third loop created by step three. Final step, moisten before drawing tight. So there's your World's Fair Knot, ready to go head to head with our challenger. Let's find out how to tie the fish and fool. Insert the tag end through the eye of the hook twice and then run it up the main line. Then bend the line downward to form a loop. Run the tag end through the loop five times. Tighten with the tag end after moistening the line and carefully slide the knot to the eye of the hook. So there it is, the fish and fool, this week's challenger. And I love that name. Because, let's be honest, we've all looked like fools fishing. <laughs> so, let's see what happens on this week's competition. We've got our trusty Berkeley Knot War machine all set up with the Challenger. That's the fishing fool. And the returning winner, World's Fair Knot. Let's see which one holds up under pressure. <laughs> The World's Fair Knot just met its match with our challenger, the Fish and Fool. But I'm not really surprised because the Fish and Fool Knot is one of the strongest knots we've ever tested here at Knot Wars, which means it's gonna come back next week to face a new challenger, the Eugene Ben Knot. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but that knot is named for a river in Oregon. Or, or my neighbor, Eugene. I don't really know, but I do know that it's gonna be here next week. So if you want to learn how to tie either one of these knots, just head on over to our website, fishingclub.com. Or better yet, 
Download the Not War app on your smartphone. Not Wars, because no good fish story ends with a broken knot. Fish. Oh my goodness, I got a rock that's swimming. Nice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Wow! We have uh, come back out here and fished a spot that we started on earlier. A couple hours later, bam! Five pounder. Love it. Oh, I got one! Ooh. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a dandy. Man, beautiful four pound fish. And you know, we're here in early June in uh, Malax Lake out here in the middle, fishing 11 feet, 9 feet, drop shotting. And you guys, anybody can come out here and catch fish like this. And uh, <laughs> we've caught a bunch of them today. Just had a great time. It's a great fishery. And Janet, thank you for coming up. Thank you. You want to kiss him? No, I don't want to kiss sure? your fish. Just put him okay. back, put him back. <laughs> At the end of the day, the wind came up a little bit. We dialed those fish in. We got to where we could almost, you know, pick our cast. If that's a bass, he's heavy. He is. Oh, I got one too. Good job, Dennis. <laughs> oh my. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can get them both. Here, I'll hold yours. <laughs> you got it? Uh-huh. This is <laughs> pandemonium, a little crazy. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Right, cheers. <laughs> These are nice ones.